Joining me to talk more about the Supreme Court is Matthew Continetti, editor of the Washington Free Beacon. What do you make of uh, Schumer's comments here about Judge Amy Barrett? Well, I think Schumer's tweets may have been directed at an audience of one, and that is Senator Collins, whose vote is so important to the confirmation of President Trump's pick. I also think there's a chance that Senator Schumer may be trying to goad President Trump into nominating Judge Barrett, who he thinks has a higher chance of being opposed by Senators Collins and Murkowski. Because she has is on the record on Roe v. Wade, right? That's right. That's right. And even though she um, got through to the appeals court last year, uh, her nomination uh, encountered ferocious um, criticism from Democrats like Dianne Feinstein, which was really um, almost uh, indeed stepped over the line into simple anti-Catholic bigotry. Nominating Barrett, I think, would be uh, President Trump's way of throwing a grenade into the 2018 midterm election cycle. And, of course, President Trump does like to disrupt things. What does this nomination, if it was Amy Barrett or any of the other ones, what does this say about the 2018 elections where you've got 10 Democrats up for re-election in states that President Trump won? That's right. Well, you know, as much as we're talking about Senators Collins and Murkowski, the real party that Supreme Court nominations divides is the Democratic Party. And that is because, precisely as you say, there are many Democrats from red states who voted for Donald Trump in the election. And, of course, one of the reasons Donald Trump won the 2016 election was his promise to nominate uh, originalist or strict constructionist judges who refer always to the Constitution in their decisions. So a lot of these senators who are up for re-election on the Democratic side are going to be put in a vise. I, I look especially at Senator Claire McCaskill from Missouri. She's already in a tough race against the AG there, Josh Hawley. And she's now going to be put in a place where voting against President Trump's nominee uh, will be very unpopular with a lot of rural Missourians. So that's obviously what we're looking at. But we also see the White House having outreach. They, they met with the three Democrats who voted for Neil Gorsuch, uh, including Joe Manchin of West Virginia. Uh, do you think that outreach will continue? It depends on how successful Schumer uh, is in rallying his caucus. I think it also depends a lot on who President Trump nominates. If they nominate someone like a Brett Kavanaugh, uh, who's probably kind of understood to be the more the safer pick in a way, uh, it might be possible to get some of those Democratic votes, like with Justice Gorsuch, uh, to vote in support. Uh, if it's a controversial nominee, someone like Judge Barrett, I think Schumer might have an easier time. And remember, Schumer has all of the Democratic liberal groups as well pressuring those red state Democrats to vote against the, just, the judge and perhaps endangering their re-election chances. Republicans have a 51 seat, they have 51 senators. That's just the number needed to get one of these ju judges confirmed. What do you do with Susan Collins? What does the president do to get her on board? Well, yeah, I think you nominate someone like Justice Gorsuch, right, who she supported. And, of course, he is a, a judge who has a more originalist philosophy about the Constitution, who refers back to the American founding, um, and uh, who is understood to be, you know, m more open to restrictions on the practice of abortion. Uh, a judge like that is probably going to get Senator Collins. But, of course, remember, there's a 51-seat majority but there's only 50 Republican senators because John McCain is in Arizona. So that makes this fight um, the, the, even more uh, on a razor's edge. And you've got the vice president who can cast a tiebreaker here if needed. Going back to Susan Collins of Maine's Republican, she says she will not support a nominee who demonstrates hostility to Roe v. Wade. So, again, how, do, how does that play out with what she's now saying to the president right now? Well, I think what you have is a lot of people in the White House Counsel's Office pouring through not only the judicial opinions written by the prospective nominees, but also as far back as, say, their college op-eds, right, uh, to see whether they're on record, even in any piece of writing, demonstrating what um, Collins called hostility toward Roe v. Wade. What the White House wants is a, a, a nominee who will be very hard to pin down on the Roe question, which means that the fight will really be over judicial philosophy. And if the fight's over judicial philosophy, the White House wins easily. And the president has again and again promised that whoever he picks will be pro-life and will be a strict follower of the Constitution. So we'll just see who it is. That's right. Thank you. Math Matthew Continetti of the Washington Free Beacon, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.